Avery was very adventurous and fun-loving. He loved the outdoors. Uh, he loved animals. He loved his family. He loved video games. The relationship with my brother and I is pretty typical. Um, with me being the older sibling, it seemed that he was a lot more protected of, of me than I was of him, and that stuck through all the way up until he passed. Um, we noticed Avery struggling with mental health issues not too long before he passed. We started notice, noticing that he was withdrawing and, and wearing long sleeve shirts and long sleeve pants and we're in the middle of summer. We actually sat down with him the Thursday before he passed um, to just, you know, do you need to see a therapist? You know, do you need more one-on-one -on -one time with mom? Do you need more one-on-one -on -one time? With dad, what's, you know, what's going on? It was just a, mm, you know, shrugging his shoulders and, and that was it. I was working a shift at my job at the time. I was trying to call my parents and my mom sounded, um, it's hard to explain. Just, I knew something was off. I was like, mom, what the hell's going on? <laughs> you need to tell me. And she's like, this isn't something I want to tell you over the phone. It was probably 8.30 between 8.30 and 9 o'clock that night um, that he ended up making that decision. And I got the call around 10 o'clock that night. We got to the street. Um, there was police everywhere. There was lights flashing everywhere. Please tell me you're joking. Please tell me this is just a joke. And he goes, I'm not, I'm sorry. My dad came out of the house and I need, he just, he hugged my mom and I. I was sitting on the bathroom floor and I heard them r rolling the cart up the stairs and out the house. And that's when I knew he wouldn't be coming back. And, and I ran into my room and I tore up the whole place looking for a note because I figured at least out of everyone he would have left something for me. The feeling is unexplainable. Like, my whole world was just ripped from the core. It was a true bloody nightmare. I think as parents, we get so focused on taking care of them physically that we tend to look past and, and our, our Stress as a parent is so different than the stress of an adolescent. And I think the parents think that, what do you have to be stressed about? But if they really took a look at everything that their kids go through and the things that they face every day with holding a job, extracurricular activities, doing good in school, taking exams, that's really stressful. My advice to those parents would be that your kids feel the same things that you do. They're just different situations. And it's okay for their kids to be mad and frustrated and sad and happy. And the maturation program would be a perfect place to, to have this conversation because they're having a conversation with these 10-year-olds about your body's changing your hormones are changing, but they don't talk about bullying and they don't talk about your emotional changes and they don't, you know, they, they need to, these kids need to understand that yeah, sex ed is great, but mental health education is, is needed. It breaks my heart every time I hear of another youth suicide. We're losing our future. The best form of education and prevention would be talking about it. Um, talking about it in the schools, talking about it in your home. When you fear something, you give it power. And I think that's the biggest issue, is everybody fears the word suicide and the act of it. And as soon as you fear it, you give it power.